Wait, hold up. PK Subban is calling it a career already? What were my initial reactions and what's hurt his career so far? And also, what is the situation for Jonathan Bernier? I have some good news if you're willing to give Jonathan Bernier another shot. We have a lot to talk about in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play -play announcer and also Devils writer for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. So let's talk about the big news that was revealed yesterday. I figured that I would do an episode centered around P.K. Subban, you know, sometime soon in regards to why I feel as though the New Jersey Devils should give him another chance. I know I did an episode about that over the summer. I felt as though it was worthy enough to at least do a revisit and just say, like, look, we're trying to get more veteran players. I would love to have P.K. Subban on the roster once again. Former Norris Trophy winner. Seems like everyone loves him in the locker room. I did not anticipate doing an episode centered around P.K. Subban's retirement. I didn't think it would be coming this soon, but P.K. Subban has been available in the market for quite some time, and he wasn't latched on to any team. However, I did hear rumors saying that um, there were a couple teams, I think the New York Rangers were one of them, saying that P.K. Subban was sparking some interest, according to his agent, uh, who spoke to Ryan Novozinski, who is, who is a New Jersey Devils beat writer for NJ.com. Uh, P.K. Subban's agent said that P.K. Subban was receiving some offers and that they were just trying to mull their, their future plans. I didn't think that retirement was on P.K. Subban's mind because the fact of the matter is this. P.K. Subban is 33 years of age. Yes, he's not the youngest guy on the rink, but I still felt as though he had a couple years left in him. I, I, I think that uh, if he were to sign with the team, he could have provided some sort of production because this is sort of a fall from grace for P.K. Subban, if any, because if we recall his last three years with the New Jersey Devils, certainly not memorable, especially that first year. But the one thing I always said about P.K. Subban was that he improved. He got better. And I, I saw the, the silent but somewhat productive um, stats for P.K. as the years went on when he was wearing a Devils uniform. And I get that it was a far cry from what he was able to do during his days with the Montreal Canadiens and also the Nashville Predators. But, you know, it's just like it, it was one of the reasons why I was so willing to bring P.K. Subban back just because, you know, I, I saw that production. I saw that he was improving. And like I just said moments ago, he's a great presence to have in the locker room because one of the things that P.K. Subban brings that a lot of players on our roster did not possess – was experience because P.K. Subban has made Stanley Cup finals runs. He's won a Norris Trophy. He's one of the more polarizing figures in the entire league, whether it's on the ice or off the ice. Obviously, he got his fair share of controversy this past season due to slew footing a few players. In fact, that hurt the Rangers. And in, in, in fact, they, that's why Sammy Blay had to uh, sit out the rest of the year when he got slew footed by P.K. Subban. I don't think there was any ill intent right there. Just wrong place, wrong time. But that's a discussion for another time. But I, my initial reactions when I saw that P.K. Subban was retiring, I must say I was, um, I was somewhat surprised just because I, I didn't think that retirement was on P.K. Subban's mind. Did I think he was going to latch on to a team? I, I thought sooner rather than later. I thought, you know what, the season is about to begin. We're just a few weeks away. Uh, we're, we're a couple days away from preseason actually beginning. So I was like, maybe once teams start to figure out their roster or their roster structure, then maybe P.K. Subban could sign a cheap deal with, um, with, with the team and just go from there. Or maybe, quite honestly, I, I don't know if he was offered any PTO deals. I, I can't confirm or deny that. But the, the news was certainly shocking because, I, I, like I said, I wanted P.K. Subban back on the New Jersey Devils roster just at a cheaper deal. And now it raises the question, what's next for P.K. Subban? Well, I did say over the summer, if P.K. Subban doesn't appear in another NHL game, I think he'll sleep well at night just knowing that he has deals with ESPN. Obviously, he's appeared on first take during the course of the playoffs this season and last year. We saw P.K. Subban just breaking down certain plays, certain players, 
wherever the case might be. He actually did a wonderful job. And he also has his own uh, ESPN Plus uh, uh, short, thanks to uh, Peyton Manning, which is called PK's Place, which is an expansion on uh, Peyton's Place. So I said that PK Subban, uh, if ESPN and Disney Plus knows what's best for them, and if they really want to utilize hockey similar to what they do for basketball, use someone like PK Subban, because even if you don't know the sport of hockey, you're at least somewhat familiar with someone like PK Subban. So all I can say is best wishes moving forward. And it's hard to believe because PK Subban has been in the league for 13 years. It seems like he's been in the league lo much longer and he's only 33 years of age. He won a Norris trophy back in 2013. He's a multi-time all-star. He was on the cover of NHL 19. So this has been, um, it, this is like the prime example of falling from grace because PK Subban was an all-star back in 2018. He uh, won the King Clancy Memorial Trophy over the summer. And like I said, he won a Norris Trophy just under 10 years ago. And now once he got to the New Jersey Devils, his production and his role on a respective team just went down. And I guess it doesn't really help that PK Subban couldn't find um, you know, himself on a rebuilding team like the New Jersey Devils, a Devils team that he was pegged to be one of the leaders for. Because remember, when we first obtained P.K. Subban, it was a big deal because we got him on the down low. Obviously, his contract played a factor. It was a way to keep Taylor Hall happy. We're getting someone who has a good track history added to the roster. And maybe this could be the start of something beautiful. And maybe the New Jersey Devils can go, go back to being a consistent playoff team. Obviously, that's not how it panned out. P.K. Subban had a lackluster first year. Taylor Hall was dealt away. So it was just like, now what do we got? We got a player with a lengthy contract. We tried exposing him in the Seattle crack and expansion draft. They didn't want to take him. They didn't want to take any big contracts. So it, it really did hurt P.K. Subban a little bit, just knowing that a team, a bottom tier team like the New Jersey Devils, didn't really want his services. It, it's not that we didn't want his services. We just didn't want his contract. But even then, the fact that he wasn't able to just like – at least show glimpses of what he was once capable of really just, you know, put the, it was just the writing on the wall saying that PK Subban didn't really have much longer or his chances were going uh, down. But like I said, I can't confirm or deny if PK Subban was received offers during the course of the off season. I presume he was. And I thought the New Jersey Devils were willing to give him another chance. I saw, as you guys saw during the course of the summer, he was hanging out with Jack Hughes and, I, I thought that Jack Hughes would, would you know, use some nepotism a little bit to just convince the front office saying, hey, I want PK back on the team. I'm sure Jack Hughes tried, but I think PK, uh, if he was really contemplating retiring, it's not something you you make in within a week. It's something you make within months. And, um, you know, it's a hard decision. It, it really is because it's just like you have to contemplate everything. You got to contemplate your income. You got to contemplate your family. So there's a lot of factors that goes into retiring and uh I was stunned like everyone else and just seeing that Instagram post and just seeing that farewell, um, that farewell message that PK left. He left, he certainly left an impact on I'm glad he retired as a New Jersey devil. So best wishes moving forward. I can't wait to see what he does in the media. And also I'm going to bring up something that might be somewhat crazy, but um, I think the New Jersey devils should consider bringing PK Subban along as some sort of advisor because he's so well respected in the locker room. The New Jersey Devils are trying to, uh, you know, have more veterans on the roster. That's why we added people like Eric Halla, Andre Palat, and so on. But, you know, maybe getting P.K. Subban back into that locker room, I don't think it would be the worst idea in the world, just in a different sort of role, not as a player. So if I'm Tom Fitzgerald, maybe I'm hitting P.K. Subban's line saying, hey, do you want to become like a, a player advisor or, or, or some sort of honorary position that keeps P.K. Subban in the locker room? but he doesn't necessarily have like, I guess, a quote unquote official role, if that's how you want to describe it. But ultimately all I can say is, uh, and this is the last time I'll, I'll say it, uh, stunned by the decision, didn't see it coming. Um, he could sleep well at night knowing that he has at least something to fall back on with ESPN and Disney and, uh, and so on. I, I expect big things from him in that sort of regards. He's definitely going to be a big media personality kind of guy. Uh, I think he did receive offers during the course of the offseason. I'm not sure how serious he was uh, actually considering taking them. And I still felt as though he had a few more years left in the tank. And uh, it's, it's disappointing to see. But at the same time, I do respect his decision uh, to just call quits. And he's had a pretty, pretty decent career. And, you know, uh, something that no one can take away from him is that, you know, he was a Norris Trophy winner. He was a multi-time All-Star. And he's been a 
great advocate for the sport of hockey, just trying to diversify it a little bit more, trying to get more people of color involved and just being, you know, a great uh, outspoken kind of guy. And I think a lot of people can respect that in that regard. So once again, congratulations to PK Subban on a great career and uh, best wishes moving forward. And, you know, um, stunned, surprised, but same time, I, I do respect it. So we'll leave it at there. Now, I want to bring you guys the first and only live read this morning before we continue with today's show. It comes from our friends at Bet Online. So, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest, easy way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Lockdown Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, so I've been meaning to talk about this for quite some time, but uh, a lot of you have been asking me, do I have an update on Jonathan Bernier? And quite honestly, guys, I'm just as confused as um, a lot of you are because I don't know what the situation is for Jonathan Bernier because – on the one hand, when he first went down with his hip injury, uh, Lindy Ruff said he was concerned. And when your coach says the word concerned and you're an older guy like Jonathan Bernier, usually never a good sign. And then uh, uh, when he has a surgery, he says he wants to come back. He has one year left remaining. I don't know what the full situation is for Jonathan Bernier, but luckily I do know some people who were. Now, recently my buddy, the Brad Pack, had a Twitter space and he invited Ryan Novozinski and Julie Robbenheimer to appear on it. So Julie Robbenheimer uh, actually covers the New Jersey Devils, and here's what she had to say during the Twitter space. So according to Brad Pack, Jonathan Bernier is currently expected to return to the Devils by Thanksgiving. Both of these, because uh, she talked about Michael McLeod's status as well, uh, Julie Robbenheimer talked about it in last night's Twitter space. So according to Robbenheimer, who once again covers the New Jersey Devils, it is fully anticipated that Jonathan Bernier will return uh, come Thanksgiving. So he uh, obviously Ryan Novozinski already stated saying that Jonathan Bernier is not ready to return come the start of preseason or the start of the regular season, but will return at some point this year. Now, that is actually good news to hear because originally when I heard the report that Jonathan Bernier would not be ready at the start of the season or preseason, I was actually anticipating for him to just hang up the skates and just retire just because like uh, he's getting older, he's dealing with a hip injury. Lindy Ruff was concerned about his overall status after he went down with the injury and, and revealed that he needed surgery. So I was just like, okay, uh, I think the New Jersey Devils should anticipate Jonathan Bernier to retire, and we're just going to have to go through the contract process because obviously he has one year remaining on his uh, on his deal. But for right now, he remains uh, on the LTIR candidate for now. So we'll see what happens. But if Jonathan Bernier were to hypothetically return for the New Jersey Devils, I actually like it, okay? So do I, where, where do I see Jonathan Bernier fitting in? Well, when we brought him on, he was originally supposed to be the backup goalie to Mackenzie Blackwood. That obviously did not work out. And now Jonathan Bernier, in the few games that he was able to suit up in, he actually put up some pretty decent numbers. And by default, he actually did lead the New Jersey Devils goalies in a few categories. So uh, he appeared in 10 games. He had a record of 4-4. Four and four. He had a goals against average of 3.06 and a save percentage of 902. Now – I believe he against uh, he's tops for goalie statistics uh, during the course of last year by default. I know it, it, it's a little unfair, but that's a, that's the fact of the matter. So it's just like where, where do we go with Jonathan Bernier because uh, he's 34 years of age. He just got a major surgery, and you know it's been revealed that he is going to return at some point. But where does he slide in? I'd say keep Mackenzie Blackwood and B Tech Manchek as your one A and your one B see who's the better starter, see who's better suited at the backup position. And then Jonathan Bernier, no ands, ifs, or buts about it, should be the third string goalie. Just because um, I, I just don't know, like, um, I just don't know how much uh, longer he has in the tank. In fact, I'd be stunned if he returns after his contract is up. So I feel as though there's really no reason to uh, re-sign Jonathan Bernier once his contract is up because I feel as though he's going to retire anyway. But I would love to have Jonathan Bernier back just because it gives us more options and – one of the criteria I said that I wanted from a backup goalie for New Jersey Devils during the course of the offseason, someone who has experience, 
someone who can act as a mentor and someone who it just gives that stability for Mackenzie Blackwood because that's something he's been so desperately lacking the last few years, and it's resulted in just injury plague years, and it's resulted in him taking the same trajectory as Corey Schneider. So, you know, while I do agree Mackenzie Blackwood does have to step up his game, this is a two-way, two-way street, excuse me, and, you know, the New Jersey Devils have to hold up their end of the bargain, and they have to do their share as well to help Mackenzie Blackwood be better suited in situations like this. Now, um, Jonathan Bernier, he certainly has the experience. He's won a Stanley Cup uh, championship uh, against the team is very irrelevant. <laughs> it was against the Devils when he was on the LA Kings. <laughs> so, you know, he could provide that stability. Um, when he was playing for the Detroit Red Wings, obviously his numbers weren't really all that good. But then again, you do need to keep in mind that the defense in front of him wasn't good either. The Detroit Red Wings had one of the more lackluster defenses in the entire NHL when he was uh, a member of their organization. Now the New Jersey Devils, we have a better, uh, we have a better de- defensive unit uh, as of right now, you know, because obviously they got Mo Sider and, and they're working on something. But I, I'd say for right now for the New Jersey Devils with Dougie Hamilton, Jonas Siegenthaler, Ryan Graves, and then obviously you got young guys like Simone Nemetz and uh, Luke Hughes set to uh, join the roster before the end of the year. So uh, there's another factor to take into consideration. And now it's just like um, I think Jonathan Bernier will be uh, better suited to uh, succeed. And also it's just like we're not going to ask much from him because I feel as though similar to like a lot of other players. And, and, you know, I use this example on P.K. Subban when we got Dougie Hamilton. The less you ask out of like Jonathan Bernier or so-and-so player, I would expect better production. Because uh, once again, since this is a P.K. Subban centered episode, I'll use P.K. Subban as an example. I, I felt as though we were uh, using P.K. Subban a little too much. Like we were just trying to muster out his old playing days when he was playing for the Montreal Canadiens and also his early tenure with the Nashville Predators. But that, obviously that didn't work. P.K. Subban just can't, you know, recreate what he once did. So it's just like, you know, what do we do? We get Dougie Hamilton, one of the top defensemen in the league, one of the top free agents available. And that takes the pressure off of someone like P.K. Subban's shoulders because he's no longer one of the vocal points of the defense and it's just like now we have a better player and a player that we can still develop because Dougie Hamilton is still relatively young in that sort of sense so uh, I think the same could be said for Jonathan Bernier since we brought Vitek Vanacek we signed him to a three-year deal I think Vitek Vanacek uh, is set to at one point be the new starting goalie for New Jersey Devils if not this year maybe next year because I, I, I think Vitek Vanacek still has a lot of room to grow and develop and I think he's on the right track obviously playing with the Washington Capitals has helped them and I just don't know how much we can retain out Mackenzie Blackwood especially since um since you know when he was first drafted when he was first brought into the organization when we first re-signed him to a to a bigger deal I was like Mackenzie Blackwood if all goes well maybe he could put his name into the Vesna trophy race just just maybe but obviously I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon so it's just like uh, we're, we're, we're just going to have to, uh, you know, do with what we got and just work from there. But ultimately, it's just like I would love to have Jonathan Bernier back on the team. He's obviously that grizzled veteran. He's been in this situation before. He's been a starter. He's been a backup. He's had solid production. I was actually very excited that Jonathan Bernier was brought along uh, to the New Jersey Devils organization. And uh, his only flaw, and I, I constantly troll him for this, is like, uh, he didn't know who Nelson Mandela was. So uh, that that that's pretty much his only uh, flaw. But still, you know, we all make mistakes. But uh, Jonathan Bernier, uh, I'm glad that he's going to be making a return. And also, as reported by Julie Robinheimer, uh, Mikey, Mikey McLeod is confirmed to be reporting to training camp this week. His situation is business as usual until further notice. So obviously, I don't really want to touch too much on it. So this is why I saved it towards the end. And I'm only going to talk about it for a minute because it is a sensitive topic. And I don't want to say anything that could upset anybody. So obviously, Team Canada had that um, uh, that sex scandal a few years ago. And now it's just like Mikey McLeod was uh, rumored to be one of the players involved. And uh, the, people couldn't reach out to him. He wasn't reaching out. So it was just like that was looking worse and worse for his uh, standpoint. And I was just like, okay. I don't know what's going to happen to Jonathan Bernier. I don't know what's going to happen from a legal standpoint, but I just said, um, you know, I won't say anything until I get confirmation, but Mikey McLeod is set to re- to appear in training camp and we'll go from there. Um, like I said, he's not out of the woods yet. He's kind of in hot water right now. The fact that he wasn't um, easy to reach out to is a little concerning, but like I said, that team Canada scandal that happened a few years ago, 
uh, one of the uh, more uh, talked about uh, things over the course of this offseason. And unfortunately, McLeod found his name into the, the mix of it. So can't confirm, can't deny anything. I'll wait until everything gets revealed. But looks like Michael McLeod will at least begin the season with the New Jersey Devils. And, um, you know, despite what d- despite all that, he's still going to add, you know, solid production to our bottom six. Can't wait to see him reunite with Nathan Bastion. And we'll just go from there. So let me know what you guys think about P.K. Subban's retirement and w- where do you think he goes from here? Personally, I just think he continues doing what he does for ESPN. I think he's going to get – uh, much um, higher salary in that regards. He's going to get more notice. And I think he's found a, a new passion for himself and 13 years. It feels like he's been in the league a lot longer than that and still relatively young. And um, yeah, just sad to see that his career uh, ended abruptly like this. And it wasn't due to injury either, but uh, you know, the fact that he wasn't able to find himself on a lackadaisical team like the New Jersey Devils, a little concerning, but uh, you know, best wishes moving forward for PK Subban and also Jonathan Bernier. Um, you know, Jonathan Bernier rumored to return to the New Jersey Devils come Thanksgiving. So it might not be the start of the season, but hey, at least we'll see him uh, before the calendar ends of the calendar year ends of 2022. So let me know what you guys think. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on a podcast streaming service, um, hit me up on my personal Twitter page at Trey Matt four or the show's Twitter page at Locked on Devils. As for today's episode, that's all time I have for you. So thanks for listening. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day in New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.